Welcome back to the McCann Dogs podcast. It is season four and oh my goodness, we have such a treat today. In the studio, I am joined by the patriarch of the McCann family and one of the co-founders of McCann Professional Dog Trainers, Marty McCann. And hi, Marty. Thanks for joining us. Thanks, Shannon. You bet. And to Marty's right is, of course, our classic swan. <laughs> instructor Swanee is in hi, the everyone. podcast studio. And I'm Instructor Shannon, and we are going to have a chat today about Pretty much anything. I've got some uh, some plans and questions about history with McCann's and history with Marty McCann in particular, but this conversation could go in just about any direction. <laughs> and I'm actually really excited to dive into this. I've wanted to do this podcast for quite a while, probably about a year now. I thought this would be a great podcast to have. And I actually originally thought having both Deb and Marty on, but then I thought, hmm, <laughs> that might get a little bit too <laughs> wild. So, were you going to say something? Sweaty? Well, I have a question. Mm -hmm. How come I had to sit beside Marty? <laughs> <laughs> because I needed room for my water and my coffee over here oh. and my clipboard. Right, but he's a, he's a little bit on my side already. I don't know. <laughs> he might encroach on your space. Who knows what's going to happen here? Marty McCann is a crapshoot. No, I'm just kidding. All right, let's learn about <laughs> Marty true. McCann before we uh, before we paint this picture too much. So, Marty. First and foremost, co-founder of McCann Professional Dog Trainers. What is the first thing that comes to mind for you when I say, when I remind you or point out that we just celebrated 40 years? I'm uh, really proud. I bet really you proud. are. Really I bet proud. you are. And a bit surprised, maybe. Isn't it crazy? Yeah. Did you ever in a million years think like, okay, so let's actually dive into the story of the very first McCann dog trainers class. How did this come to be? What was the catalyst that made you think, you know what? I want to start a business of my own. And I know there's multiple factors. So, well, I was a young person in my, I guess I was around 20 years old and we were um, training at a dog training club, a local one here, a, a one long established, it was established in 1952. And I was born in 1953, so. Oh, was, so you practically could have founded that one. Well, <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't make any mathematical sense, but anyway. <laughs> um, you yeah, were very advanced. So we were very fortunate to be a part of that club. It had as many as 300 members, which is really impressive. Mm -hmm. And um, they brought a lot of dog trainers in uh, from other areas, the United States mainly, a fellow by the name of um, Bill Keeler from California. Okay. He was a Hollywood... Um, uh, dog trainer. He came back after the second world war and, um, he wrote, uh, three books that were really well received and, um, they brought him in to teach them the local club here, how to train. And I came along, uh, maybe, I don't know how many years later, 20 years later. So they were well established. And, um, uh, I don't know. I always thought oh, I'd like to have my own business. At the time I was working for the Royal bank of mm -hmm. Canada. And, um, what were you doing there? Um, counting the $2 bills. Oh, <laughs> and, um, which are now toonies. <laughs> we no longer have $2 well, bills. Well, once right? they got rid of the $2 bills, they fired me, oh. so, <laughs> yeah, no which makes no sense. Makes no sense. That's a joke of one of my friends. But, um, anyway, so, um, they kept you around after they got rid of the dollar bill though. Yeah. Well, I, I was there, I guess, until I was 28 years old. Okay. At that time I had open heart surgery mm -hmm. and, um, just something I was born with. And uh, I'd been very healthy mm -hmm. up till that time. And I played a lot of sports. And so um, then when I was 28, I guess I'd been doing the dog training so heavily that I, I quit playing as many sports. Okay. And something that I was born with uh, broke down and I had to have open heart surgery. Mm -hmm. At that time I said, you know, I don't think I want to wait around because at that time I thought I was going to die. Yeah. Well, and, and quite literally, like, like let's, let's jump into that because this was a big part of your life. This was a big life change at that point. And you had a young daughter at that point? No, I did not. Oh, you didn't have Kelly no, yet. No, okay. no. No, it was 1982. Okay. And um, we just thought, well, I, I, for some reason, I thought I was, wasn't going to live very long after that. It was scary. Mm -hmm. It was a surprise. It was oh, shock. Oh, I'm sure. It was yeah. shock. So um, we started the business. And uh, that same year, uh, my wife, Debbie, got pregnant mm -hmm. with our first child, which is Kelly. She was born a year later in 1983. We started the business and we bought our first home. And uh, so there's a lot of things happening in 1982, mm -hmm. 1983. And uh, there was just the two of us, Debbie and I. And um, we had one 
uh, instructor that helped us with our very first classes. Mm -hmm. And that uh, person's name uh, is Faye Miller at okay. the time. She later got married and she's Faye Guest, been known as Faye Guest for many, many years now. Mm -hmm. And um, we took uh, Faye under our wing and uh, she was a member of the Hamilton Dog Business Club just like we were, but we were really focused on competitive dog training, right. Debbie and I. And um, we, we trained Faye like on the side and then she went off with us to Detroit and uh, to the World Series of Dog Obedience. And Faye placed there in the top 10 in the open class. I don't Amazing. know if you won't know what that is, but that was a big deal for a Canadian mm -hmm. because um, when I started in obedience trials, 21 years of age, all of the top dog trainers were American. And every weekend, someone would drive in from Detroit or uh, New York City or, or Boston or Philadelphia or Kentucky or Michigan or Ohio, Georgia. All they over. came from all oh over the place. Goodness. Every weekend, an American would win high in trial. Mm -hmm. And I said to one of my mentors, one of my early instructors, why is it? Why is it that they win? Mm -hmm. And uh, the answer he gave me was, they're just better than we are. And I thought, why would that be? Because since I was a young boy, I'd competed in the States in hockey in Michigan. And I competed in baseball at age eight and nine, 10 in um, baseball in, in New York State, Rochester area. Mm -hmm. And I billeted with the young boys in um, in those countries. And they were familiar with 10 pin bowling. We have five pin bowling again. I learned a little bit about the United States. It was, it was great. So I saw myself as being equal to them. Mm -hmm. So I thought, well, if the Americans can win, I, I can do that. So anyway, Why not? yeah. So anyways, Debbie and I went to our very first trial mm -hmm. and um, we, um, Debbie would place first in the class and I would place second. And in the next <laughs> trial, the next trial, I would place first. She would uh, place second. And we came home with 13 trophies. Wow. So we were really, really excited with of our course. success. Yes. We're young, we're athletic, we're enthusiastic, we're keen, we're learning all the time. And, um, Anyway, we um, went back and we showed our um, instructors, our teachers at the club, and um, many of them were really excited for us and proud and happy. And the odd one was actually resentful. Yeah, We didn't understand that, but um, we didn't realize that we were unique because we'd won and they weren't accustomed to winning. So anyway... Um, it's the nature of the human. Yeah. Our, so, our emotions range all over. Yeah. So anyways, uh, most most of the members were wonderful and supported us. Good. But a few weren't very supportive. Um, anyways, they did get those that were um, in favor of us, so gave us opportunities. And Debbie and I soon started teaching classes there. Okay. And then we uh, developed a bit of a following. And uh, one of which was... Um, Christine's father. <laughs> I, I know Christine. You introduced her as uh, Swanee or Christine Swan. Every time I try to say Instructor Christine, I end up saying Instructor Swanee. Swanee. I mean Instructor Christine, so I just gave up trying. <laughs> well, I know her as Christine Leslie. Okay. I've known her yes, since she was a little yes. kid. I have many names. Many names. Before and, she was a swan. <laughs> well, I know a lot of people when I tell them Christine's actual age, they're quite shocked. And uh, but I've known her since she was um, our ball person. On, in fly ball. Okay. Yes. And um, Christine, how old were you? Well, I was, I actually helped with scent hurdling too. Oh my gosh. So, wow. really right. So I, that goes way back. I, like, I remember my dad going to visit you in the hospital when you had your heart surgery. Ah, that's great. So I think we've known each other for a long time. Yes. For a long, long time. Long, it's very much beyond, much beyond 40 years. Much right. Much beyond 40 years. Yes. Yes. Because yeah. I was probably, how, what year would you have? 1982. I was born in 67. So there you go. So right. Oh my. Yeah. Yeah. So you, Lots of history. Yeah. But I think you, I was about yeah, 12 when we were doing fly ball. I think yeah, I was like yeah. 11 or 12. So you probably, you probably have known Debbie and I since 1977, I'm guessing. Right. Mm -hmm. I'm guessing. Yes. Yes, I'm guessing. Yeah. But um, around there. Right. So you were maybe 10. There you go. I was probably about 10. Yeah. 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 Because I used to tag along with my dad each week to the yep. dog club. And uh, exactly. that was like the big... The big Thursday nights. Yes. That was the big night out. It yeah. was. It was the you waited all week for Thursday night. Highlight of our week. <laughs> right. So in 1980, they mm -hmm. had the first fly ball tournament. Okay. Christine was there. And she, when the, uh, at the end first of the- First fly ball tournament in Canada or uh, first fly well, ball tournament uh, anywhere? North America? Anywhere in the world. Okay. The very first tournament ever was okay. held in Toronto in 1980. And um, that's a whole other story, which I know a lot about fly ball. Yes. Because I was in the first- 
fly ball tournament ever mm-hmm. held. Well, and we have the the McCann fly ball team has the second of all time registration. Is that correct? Well, we have we are have we the- team two or team three. One of the remember. two. Either way, there's there's probably tens of thousands right. of teams at this point. Oh, maybe hundreds of thousands. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, with the NAFA, the regis- yeah, well, the yeah, registry, yes, yes. yes. Well, the truth is, we were number one. Okay. And uh, that that's a little side story. I can go into it if you wish. So here's how Flyball started. Flyball mm-hmm. started in Michigan. Flyball as it's known today. But it was actually seen on the, Tron- on the um, Johnny Carson show, The Tonight Show. And that would have been, say, 1978 or so, okay. maybe. And um, so the a, a club in Detroit called the uh, they called the Dog Training Club of uh, was it the Sportsman's Club? Exactly, Sportsman's Club of Detroit. Yeah, yeah yes, yes. Yeah. They they came to Toronto uh, for a big event called the Metropolitan Kennel Club Show, and they um, they had William Shatner there. Because he's Canadian, wow, he's from okay. Montreal, and uh, William Shatner was there. He was the celebrity they used. It was called the Metropolitan Kennel Club Show. Was he playing fly ball? <laughs> he wasn't doing anything <laughs> other than being a celebrity. Okay. He had was- a Doberman, his his family Doberman, I guess. And yeah. anyways, they brought him there as a hook to bring in the crowds. Okay. So, anyways, Deb and I were there uh, with our Airedale Terriers because we'd already built up a reputation as you know having top dogs. So they hired us to come down and. Uh, do demonstrations in those days there only would have been obedience demonstrations so we would have done uh jumping and retrieving and signals and scent work and stuff like that right anyway at the same time that they brought us in to do that demonstration they brought in the sportsman thanks so much for being here christine (laughs) the sportsman's uh, dog training club of uh detroit Mm -hmm. and um they did fly ball and the way they they did fly balls, they made it their own way. They saw it on the Tonight Show, mm-hmm. and there's a gentleman on there by the name of Herbert O. Wegner. And I know online some of the uh, uh, fly ball organizations uh, misspell his name. They write Wagner. His name was Wegner, W E G N E R. Okay. And uh, he demonstrated fly ball, so he is the real inventor of fly ball. Okay. So the Detroit club contacted him. And they uh, wanted to, you know, learn how to do it and buy his instructions and mm-hmm. that sort of thing. And uh, they, deter- they decided they didn't want to spend any money. So they made their own contraption. And that <laughs> contraption perhaps was similar, who knows, and they, their own contraption of a fly ball box. And they um, trained with their, their club. They were brought in to Toronto to the Metropolitan Kennel Club, and they did a demonstration. Well, those trainers were obedience trainers, which I was familiar with. So they spoke to me and they said, hey, Marty, why don't you put a team together? And we'll have a next time we'll have a race. So, um, yeah, it was only a couple <laughs> months later in um, Toronto at the Credit Valley uh, 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 Obedience and Dog Club right. mm-hmm. um, hosted it, and we raced against a team, the team from Detroit, a team from Ottawa. Okay, don't ask me why. By town, it was By town yeah, Obedience you, well, Club. Yeah, good yeah. to have her here. And, um, <laughs> and then also there was a club from uh, Flint, Michigan. Okay. And um, it was, so they're all obedience clubs because their fly ball had just been invented. At the same time this was going on in uh, Britain, the agility was invented. And so it was at the Cruft Show. It was a big deal, that sort of thing. Anyway, uh, so we, we rate, I was the competition chairman for the Hamilton Dog Obedience Club. Okay. We ne- did not yet have our own business yet. So this is 1980. It was a couple of years. So anyways, we won that tournament. And uh, then we won the next one. By 1982, we started our business. And so from 82 till uh, uh, probably 1994, Mm -hmm. the McCann team was the best in the world. Amazing. Set Mm -hmm. numerous records. We also um, influenced the sport in a lot of ways in terms of training techniques. We influenced the box. The box design, for sure. Even as it's known today. Well, it's so funny because... um, Four or five years ago, maybe. I don't know. COVID probably interrupted this process. But we had talked at one point about starting a flyball museum at McCann Dogs. Yes. Remember us having these right. conversations? <laughs> well, that, we yes. have so many different versions of the flyball box dating all the way back to the originals that were like a big soup can, basically, where the dog would trigger the box and the soup can, the arm would come up to throw the tennis ball out of the soup can and the dog would have to catch it. Which, or get smacked in the face by the can. Yes, yeah. exactly. <laughs> which if you are familiar with fly ball and you've seen modern boxes, they are absolutely quite the engineered marvel at this point compared mm-hmm. to the... But it, that was a pretty great right. design back and, then and as well. And that's that's why it call, was called flyball because the ball actually <laughs> flew. Like now the ball just goes 
from the box basically to the dog's mouth. Exactly. It might fly half an inch or an inch. But yes. back then, our balls flew. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> we could go in a different direction right? with this yes. conversation now. <laughs> the ball um, flew like a pop fly in baseball. Right. It went up in the air with an arc quite high, and then the dog would field it and then catch it or miss it in many cases and run back. So the dogs soon started to say, well, I'm not going to wait for it to go high in the air. I'd go right to the ball. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's why the box had to be redesigned. The ball was put inside the box so they couldn't get it out of the soup can, et cetera, et cetera. Anyways, that's a whole, right, yes. a whole other story. And the box so loader had to be careful too because oh, if bet. they happened to be standing over that farm as it came flying up. <laughs> so I'm dying to know what the average time was for a fly ball run back then. Well, I would say, I know the uh, the Toronto newspaper known as the Globe and Mail, which is still in existence, a national newspaper. They interviewed my wife after we won. And as we were going back all excited with our victory, uh, one of the reporters said, what, what, what are you so excited about? And what was the time? The time was 32 seconds. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Which is such a contrast to the world record holders are somewhere around three and a half seconds at this point. Well, four, 14 point something oh, for seconds. for the entire for race. For the entire race. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yes. yeah. For the four okay. dogs. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Right. So we yeah, cut the that time That changes half. the yeah. perspective quite a bit. Oh well, the reason, though, for the time change, at the t that was a th really fast 32. Yeah. It was a completely different era. The boxes weren't as slick. Oh, absolutely. The training wasn't as good. Uh, the breeds were different too. Pardon me? The breeds were different too. Oh, right? they were. Yeah. There was everybody's family pet. Yes. yes. Now dogs are bred specifically for sports. Absolutely. And um, yeah, there was, oh, there's so many innovations were made since that time. So f I know that the newbies, of the, what I would call it, newbies, anybody who started after me, is... Um, <laughs> They, they, they that's all of us they, they <laughs> think it's hilarious that it's 32 seconds but if they were racing they would have been 34 seconds because yeah. right. that was winning that yes, was winning absolutely anyways there were so many innovations that uh, changed it all and I, I i'm familiar with those innovations and it, it was uh hey at the time what it did though is it got us a lot of publicity uh locally and nationally mm -hmm. and th there's an interesting thing about a w the way our whole business really evolved because of our location here we're 45 minutes from downtown toronto we're 45 minutes from the Toronto airport. We're also uh, 45 minutes from Niagara Falls, New York. So we can cross to the United States in 45 minutes. We're eight hours from pretty much all the major centers in the U.S., whether that's Chicago mm -hmm. or Boston or New York City. Um, we're uh, six hours maybe from Montreal. So we're located in an ideal location. Mm -hmm. So that we, Debbie and I, traveled across the border all the time to compete. So that's how we learned. Yeah. But here, here's the, the big kicker to me, because I'm into geography and locations and the United States. Um, we got all kinds of media attention because Toronto is the center of the universe as far as Canadians are concerned. It's true. And Toronto is, I think, the third largest metropolitan area in North America. Only New York and Los Angeles are larger. Okay. Uh, Chicago is very similar. I think it's slightly smaller than Toronto. They're virtually the same size. So but being a media center, uh, we got attention. Uh, and whether that was, in those days, there was no social media. Mm -hmm. There was a magazine mm -hmm. called Dogs in Canada. Yes. Well, we were in it regularly. We were in it so regularly that my children's birth announcements were in there in the people <laughs> column. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. And all our flyball victories brought, because all the major dog shows, there was a flyball tournament in conjunction. Mm -hmm. We were getting attention. Right. And dog shows were huge back then. Yeah. Like, yes. yes. Like, yeah. We, yeah. we, I remember doing them in the Sky Dome. And, we did you know, the Sky Dome. Uh, so yeah. it, it brought in... Like dog shows have really changed themselves. They yes. have. Well, and and the entire landscape, the mm -hmm. Canadian Kennel Club, the Dogs in Canada was attached to. I actually just got my 20 year Canadian Kennel Club membership. And it used to be a lifetime membership where then you would no longer have to pay dues and you would just move forward as this, you know, esteemed mm -hmm. 20 plus right. year member of the club. Now you get a pin and a letter that says, thanks. You're see you later. Even, you're not even wearing oh, your pin. Hopefully you join next year. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I digress. All right. So back to Flyball. What breeds were you running so you ran the airedales did you get into other breeds before you left flyball or well we had um we had airedales mm -hmm. so they were well trained in obedience and in scent hurdling yes yes very um so so many topics we can talk about here oh yeah really mm -hmm. boy goodness <laughs> <laughs> anyway um there was a Sheltie on our team. Okay. Sheltie Sheepdog. There was a, a miniature poodle. Mm -hmm. uh, there was a Doberman. Yep. Faced soon. Doberman. Yep. 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 Uh, German Shepherds. Okay. And My know, dad's it, Boxer. Yeah, Boxer. Yep. Any, any breed. Any mm -hmm. breed. All breeds. All breeds. Actually, at one point, because I was so 
uh, involved in the sport. I had a lot of influence over some directions. We started a six uh, dog team. Okay. It's called six breed. We also made a, a division called four breed. Okay. Where you had to have each breed had to be different. And it's uh, still around. Four yeah. breed is still very popular. Yeah. And we pushed it so that we had, because we wanted more dogs involved. We had six breed. Now that fell off the way because most of the teams couldn't support a six, mm -hmm. uh, six different breeds. We could. So, you know, we had a Newfoundland. And that's, oh my that's one of the reasons I did six breeds. I wanted to, have, right. you know, a mutt, a dog who wasn't purebred was a breed that mm -hmm. was considered a breed. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so anyways, times have changed. Oh, they but, certainly But have. We, we, we involved everyone. And um, in those days, there was no, there was no lights starting and finishing. It was, it was all human judged with a little red yes. flag and they blew a whistle to start. So 32 seconds, it's nothing to be ashamed of. It's to be proud of. Right. We, definitely. We, we oh, were the definitely. champs. Yeah. We Remember the Dave champs. Samuels? Remember our, the oh, judge? Yeah, yeah, yeah Dave yeah, Samuels. Yeah, yeah, yes, yeah. yeah. Michigan guy. Yeah. He, he specialized in judging. Yeah, he was, so, yeah, remember yeah. he had... Started yeah. this thing, arm, whole arm thing. <laughs> <laughs> the, the history is so fascinating. I really think that we need to revisit the idea of the Flyball Museum. Even if we put something together virtually for like a virtual yes. Flyball Museum. Right. Flyball, yes. Flyball Museum. I think yeah. that Flyball people now would be fascinated to know where all this history came from. Mm -hmm. I had no idea we McCann Dogs team originated the four breed thing. Like that's amazing. And the six breed. Hey, and the six breed, yep. which is I'll no longer a thing. That's, that's very interesting. So cool. You know how you said we had many different... Uh, models editions iterations of the fly box we actually have the very first fly ball box ever is that the one hanging in the uh, airlock no it's not when you walk in it's okay. not it's, no that's a later one the reason we have <laughs> that's it, more modern we weren't the first we weren't the first to, to, it wasn't our box but what happened is i, I mentioned the uh, sportsman's dog training club of division they were the first so the, after a few years their members quit participating so they were no longer around. And then after a, a brief hiatus, uh, a, some new members of their club started again. And I told them about the history of, they were quite fascinated, they didn't know about it. So I told them about how it happened. And next day, a few years later, some one day they come on and say, Marty, here, we want you to have this. They gave they, they found the original box in someone's wow. shed. Oh. That's how it came into my possession. And yes. you still have it? We sure do. Oh my god. We sure do. And um <laughs> we we do. So anyways, and um Anyways, well, I guess we'll have to show that. Yes. So, yes, yes, we have the very first box, plus many different ones after that. The only reason we have it is because they knew that I was there, and they know that I was familiar with the history and the progress, et cetera. So we have it mm -hmm. and many others. And they figured you would keep it forever. And I do have it. I do have it. <laughs> For posterity. So, uh, very Perfect. proud of it. Right? It's, like, so Amazing. I, yeah. it's, the thing is that um, I'm 70 now, born in 1953, and uh, so many of the people that were there, are not around anymore. So we need to keep this legacy going. Yes, yes so, absolutely. Yeah. So anyways, Flyball got us attention, uh, got us media attention. It got us uh, attention within the sport, uh, within do the dog uh, following, whatever you call that. Mm -hmm. Fancy, I guess is the right word. And um, that then brought us to the attention of anybody who is keen. So uh, Susan Garrett mm -hmm. was one of our students. She's well-known worldwide. Yeah. And uh, she... Many, many others, so many names that we, uh, they trained with us. They were our students initially, then they became our instructors. And that's how our business grew to be what it is today, is that Debbie and I were a big deal mm -hmm. in, in dog training. And so we attracted trainers that people are, want to be trainers. They, well, that's, they read about the dog better, magazine, huh? they saw us on TV and all that sort of stuff. So they, they were attracted to us. And because there's so much population, we, we were bringing all these top keen people in and uh, we taught them our system, McCann Method, mm -hmm. and some of them went on to great things. Absolutely. So anyways, we have um, really laid a foundation. Now that's then, but in the last few years, including yourself, Shannon, when did you start with us? I started in 99, so it's like 24 years yeah. at this point. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we have yeah. so many talented people. And the reason we are so successful to this day is we have so many talented people people from different backgrounds. Tell us about how you started. If you, if you, Oh my goodness. So yeah, we came to uh, puppy essentials class with uh, Quincy, the Rottweiler who at that point was about 11 weeks, but we had her signed up for training when she was four weeks old before we even brought her home. We had her signed up at McCann's because everybody said McCann's is the best. That's where you have to go. That's where you have to go. So my mom, 
was very big on higher education for herself, for her kids, and for her dog as well. Mm -hmm. She was already committed to, okay, we're going to do all the levels at McCann's. This dog is going to be very well trained. So in we walked. My father had gotten Quincy because he was forced into retirement early. He had a heart condition. And we wanted to make sure that he didn't become a couch potato and, you know, further make his health condition worse by not being active. So he had always wanted... A pair of Rottweilers, she said. And Mm -hmm. in hindsight, thank goodness, we (laughs) thought better of that and just went with one. But in came Quincy and on the, um, well, we went through Puppy Essentials and then on the first day of Life Skills 1, when we were sitting in in just, just absolutely aghast watching all of these trainers train their dogs, show off their skills. And I was like, I remember being so overwhelmed by the process. And Deb McCann was talking about, um, all of the instructors coming from the apprenticeship program, from their classes, and my sister poked me. You should do that. <laughs> you should do that. That's right up your alley. And I I remember, like, I, I'm, I'm not sure if you can see me getting emotional mm-hmm. here, but I remember the emotion in my body at, at that point and thinking, like, I don't want to be a computer programmer, which is what I was in school for, and that would be a dream. And then we went through... All the levels, because of course, you know, my mom was committed to higher education Mm -hmm. and I was in love with it right from the get go. And by the time I got to grade three, the instructor that taught us in grade three said, hey, we have this apprenticeship program. And I, my life changed at that point. My life completely changed, Mm -hmm. went in a polar opposite direction. And I'm so grateful. So that's 1999. That's 1999. Yeah, Yeah, absolutely. And that's, that's why we are where we are today, Mm -hmm. because we have so many people like you. Oh, and and I'm still, I still get amazed watching the other trainers and watching all the things they do with their dogs and thinking like, oh, I want to do that too. I want to try that trick. That looks like so much fun. And then I start, I, I, I'm much better at thinking like a dog these days. And I start actually breaking down how I would teach that. And then I go out and teach it. And I'm like, I can't believe I just taught my dog to do that thing. Like I still get absolutely amazed by all the wonder around me and all mm-hmm. the great creative trainers. And, you know, I want to have so many more of them on the podcast so that we can just have these conversations and just, well, you keep- are, uh, w- well, your computer programming background benefits us immensely, mm-hmm. but what's so great to me is your ability to communicate, whether uh-huh. that's verbally whether you're on camera or not, Thank your you. written ability, so many strong communicator, huge communicator, outstanding instructor, just as this kid is here. Well, yes. I will call Christine Leslie. She was one of my original instructors, <laughs> yeah. actually. She was my life skills one instructor with Quincy. And I remember you I, demoing with Iggy and demoing with Sabre. Right. I remember you being in class. Yes. And I always remember Quincy had a red collar and yes. I don't know why I remember that, but oh. it's an odd thing to remember. It but, was her color though. Yes. She always had red. I have this like collar, collar matching dogs. Uh-huh. Color color. It's very important to me. Mm -hmm. So she was always red. But at any rate, we have so many amazing instructors. We just celebrated 40 years in business. We have online training programs. We're in how many countries? 64. 64 64 countries. We have students in 64 countries around the world. We have a million and a hundred thousand and some odd followers on our YouTube channel. If I told you that we had 118,000 YouTube subscribers, if we had 118,000, you say, wow. That's amazing. But let me tell you this. We we have have a million, million, 118,000. And we're growing, I think, almost a thousand a day or something like that, 10,000 a week. It's crazy numbers. It's amazing. And if you've not been on our YouTube channel, I want you to make sure that you go and check it out because there's so much great dog training advice there that we can help you have a well-behaved family member. But my point here is that we have all of this blogs and podcasts and like, We have expanded to such a global reach and Mm -hmm. it all started with one newspaper ad. And I want to talk about that newspaper (laughs) ad and your emotions surrounding that newspaper (laughs) ad. Oh, wow. You got me there. (laughs) Well, I guess in 1982, we decided to start our own business. And um, I thought, okay, well, we'll put an ad in the newspaper because and uh, it costs three hundred dollars for thirty days to be in the local newspaper in the pet column. Mm-hmm. And uh, pet, I forgot about the pet column. Yeah. I used to love looking at was the that pet in column. classifieds. Yeah, yes, the classifieds. The classifieds. Or get a pet yes. column. Yeah, so you, you got a word, a little word ad in there yeah. for so three hundred dollars for thirty days. 
and no one, no one contacted us. Oh no! Days on it. So I said to Debbie, "There's about a week to go." And I said, "Well, it doesn't look like you know, three hundred bucks it was worth a try." And then the last week, we filled, we filled our classes. <laughs> now, now to say what we filled, it wouldn't be like today where we have a hundred students sign mm-hmm. up into session. Not in the same class. Right. In, a, in, in a session <laughs> per session. Yes, 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 yes. Um, so we 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 had. Uh, I guess it was probably eight or 12 students we, we had. So there was a Debbie spoke on the microphone to mm-hmm. control the class teach. She would be what we to nowadays call head instructor. Right. Mm-hmm. I was on the floor along with Faye Miller at the time. And so I would look after one half or float through the whole room. If there's any problem dogs, I, I was sort of my specialty back in those days. And sort of, sort of the same uh, format we have today where we have low ratio of, of students to instructor. Yes. And mm-hmm. the credit for that has to be probably given to my wife. And we've been asked to franchise many times. We've had instructors move out of the area, say, can I take your, your method and use it elsewhere? We've had a big dog food, you know, international dog food sponsors ask if we would put programs together for them in other locations. And we might said, no, we have enough trouble making sure we have a fantastic program here we, mm-hmm. we didn't want to become franchisees no. and, we, and, and you uh, don't want to lose the quality right yeah yeah so we um and the personalized yeah uh, yeah it, absolutely we're very personal yes well yes. what's worked out so well is with the um the, the growth in online mm-hmm. is we finally did get to scale it up and go worldwide so as so we have students in 70 64 countries all 50 U.S. states, all 50. Oh, wow. And that's why we, uh, some people say, why don't you charge your, your, you know, for your class in Canadian dollars? Because we have most of our students online yeah. are in the United States, all 50 states. Yes. Uh, of course, all across Canada, 64 countries. The other thing too is we have a lot of population here, but just uh, yesterday, I think I counted that we have 81 towns or cities or villages in our own home province of Ontario. Amazing. Which we couldn't yes. access before because our, our province is very large geographically mm-hmm. but we, with online we can uh, reach everyone and the online my wife was skeptical at first but we are finding and i hate to say this but we think that online may be even more effective than in person there's certain advantages in each but the individual attention that's given and with the expertise of our trainers that aren't all located here anymore mm-hmm. some trainers that were outstaying for example example robbie stevenson absolutely is a couple hours north of us here we're so blessed um, to have robbie yeah, back yeah i have a daughter on the west coast of of canada which is a, a four and a half hour flight mm-hmm. and uh, she's in, impactful to us and she's fabulous. We're, we're really we're really fortunate uh, the other thing i want to say shannon we talked about 1999 when you joined us mm-hmm. and that's been fantastic you've made us what we are today in many ways and uh but we had a lot of uh, people with us for 30 years 30 years a lot of people beyond 20 years and when the pandemic hit amazing Mm -hmm. when the pandemic hit some of those people decided to retire Mm -hmm. um because they maybe were grandmothers or they're they 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 just wanted they thought we don't know what the there was a different time say three years ago was a different time so we lost, I think, five or six people. Mm-hmm. One and came back, couldn't live without us. Yeah, we got Diane, one right here. Diane. <laughs> oh, and, oh, yes, oh, yes, yes, yes. Back. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, my gosh, yeah. of course. Right. I forgot you left. Yes, yeah. well, I, yeah, I, I did a, a temporary uh, hiatus out on the East Coast because yeah. my son was out well, there. What, what happened, though, is the um, real estate prices here had, had gone way up. And people said, you know, I maybe it's time to go down east where the real estate prices are lower yeah. and uh, take advantage of that. So so that was quite a hit we took. It was the same time the government shut us down. Mm. So we had, I would say, I'll just for a rough narrow say 30, 30 staff members at that time total. And um, we, we went down to a skeleton crew of eight. And with that skeleton crew, we focused, but we've been doing it online probably for 10 years now, yeah. I would think. And I don't know what it was then, seven, seven. And yeah, getting, we, yeah. getting close to there, I mean, 2016, I want to say, 2015, 2016. Yeah. Okay, so we, so we, we were experimenting. We were mm-hmm. winning. We were losing. We were uh, fighting things out. But when we went down to the skeleton crew, we focused on it. That's when things really took off. Yes. Plus, we were able to meet the demand because mm-hmm. there was quite a, a, an increase in demand. That's when we really uh, started to boom. The other thing is other dog training organizations – Actually, some of them went out of business because they weren't. We we'd been in business so long, and we built up our facility. I mean, everything we have here was bought and paid for by our students, mm-hmm. our success, and w- what makes us professional results. That's yes. really all that does. It mm-hmm. does Absolutely, it, you know. And um, anyway, so 
Yeah. It, uh, we're, we're just, we're, we're loaded with people that are, are highly educated, masters of science, masters of business, so many engineers. Oh, we're so, yeah. I, mm-hmm. I could go on and on. There's so many gifted, gifted people that we have. Well, and I added up the collective years of experience of our instructors. And I need to do this again because I've forgotten the number, but it was mind boggling when you added the collective years of experiences. It was in the hundreds, like several right. hundred be, yeah. years of yeah. experience because many of us have 20 plus mm-hmm. and, you know, we've been with this for a long time. Well, you, you told me this uh, a, a couple of weeks ago and you said it was 300. I thought, I think she's a bit low there because Debbie and I are a (laughs) hundred between the two of us. I love that. I love it. So anyways, we had maybe 30 uh, staff members pre pandemic went down to eight. We now I think are 55 because what happened, we brought in a lot of new people with special talents Mm -hmm. and we're so, it's so exciting for me because we started out just with us. It was scary. And, uh, I never imagined. I can't say I had some master plan or some goal and say just basically what we had to do is we had to feed our family. Yes. That's really what it came down to. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And what I guess I'm maybe more proud of than anything else, uh, everybody else is feeding their families, putting their kids through uh, school, yeah. paying their mortgage and having a, a pretty good life. And mm-hmm. the uh, future looks pretty rosy. Yes, Even though Debbie and I are stepping back so much, we had to have manager meetings because we have different people in charge of different areas of the business. Yeah. So I can't say that um, I imagine this. No, I cannot. No, it's mind boggling. Just started out small. It's the mind-boggling. bank wouldn't give us any money. Of course, wouldn't give us a, a cent. <laughs> but, and yeah, so, well, they probably would never think a dog training business no. was going to was going to float. They're pretty, yeah. They're pretty rough on all business yeah. business, anyways. So I, I had a banking background, so I knew my way around some of that stuff. But it took us a while before they wanted to give us any money. And by the time they wanted us to give it any money, I didn't want their money. Mm-hmm. So um, anyway, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> so original name of the business. Now that we're back to our uh, our roots. Yes. Well, the original business, 1982. Faye uh, Miller was at our home with us, our first instructor, mm-hmm. and um, we we're trying to pick a name. So we we're going to call it McCann and McCann, like some lawyer's verb mm-hmm. or something like that. <laughs> and Faye said. No, nah, no, nah, you guys aren't. And you probably should be versus. <laughs> well, at, the, at the time, the movie Kramer versus Kramer was the, the the really popular movie. Yeah, you two should be because we're both very competitive uh, in everything we do, sports mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. or in with one another. And we are known for uh, bickering. No, I don't know if bickering is that's that's not the right word. Just for being combative amongst ourselves. Okay, fighting yeah. to be in charge because we're yes. both leaders, I guess. Yes, and. Um, Anyway, You're both so very good at what you do. Well, we went with McCann versus, versus McCann. Yeah. <laughs> and then a few years later, I thought, yeah, that sounds, you know, Kramer versus Kramer is not, who it's knows not popular what anymore. That is. Right. So yeah. anyways, um, a friend of mine who was at a dog club, he said, you know, you should put the name professional in it because you guys are professional. So we went with McCann professional dog trainers. And uh, anyway, <laughs> uh, was there something else you were going <laughs> to ask me a question? I thought. No, so I just wanted to get back to that original name of McCann versus yes. McCann. And actually, now that we're going back again, let's talk about what were some of the catalysts that made you want to leave the dog training club that you were with at that time? Well, um, basically, we loved the dog training club. Mm-hmm. We're life members, mm-hmm. as we are life members of the Canadian Kennel Club. Yeah. So we, 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 we uh, <laughs> turned it. I actually, I saw an obituary <laughs> when I was really young. And uh, the, the person said they were a life member of the Hamilton Dog Meals Club. The kid, I thought, you know what? I think I want to achieve that. It's one of that. my goals. It was yeah. one of my dumb goals. <laughs> so I, I've achieved it. I've achieved it. Big deal. So you're grandfathered into. Uh, yeah, yeah. I, I don't have to pay for it. I haven't for many years. Mm-hmm. After 50 years, I was in after 20. So 30 years, I've been not paying dues. I should give them some money, though, just to be nice. Um, <laughs> anyway, so... Um, uh, what was your question again? With McCann versus McCann. Yeah, oh. just going back to why you left that kennel club. Oh, well, um, what happened, that's a good question, Shannon, is um, we were a bit different. That The trainers who came, that taught the, that club, they came back from the Second World War. They were men. They'd mm-hmm. been in the American Army, for example, and they trained German shepherds mainly, and they had used harsh methods mm-hmm. Uh I don't want to get into those methods, Mm -hmm. but they didn't use food at all. They didn't, there really wasn't much positive. So Debbie and I though, because we would travel to the United States to attend seminars to learn from the Americans and we we would learn from anyone, but it was mainly the United States because there wasn't really anyone here to learn from particularly for us. So um, we started using food Mm -hmm. and we were frowned upon uh, by the 
present trainers and we were you know food we weren't even allowed to use food we I were love not this uh, history. we were not love allowed it. to use food you were a cookie trainer yeah yeah a so we were they, they, made, they made fun of us mm -hmm. but they, you couldn't argue with our results and because we were excelling all the time mm -hmm. so we started uh, attracting other people so we just um i had the open heart surgery and i was getting a bit of pushback from some of the members there not you know the vast majority loved us and we loved them but there was a few of them were uh, rude to us i remember we taught a class and uh, debbie and i taught a class and we had so much fun just like we do today of course and the students had fun and uh when the judge did at their graduation this is just just terrible that the fellow did this he uh, said this is the worst graduation i've ever sent, seen this is the fellows the judge we were like taking a back and shocked the students were taking a back and shocked we thought why would he say that he said that in front of the whole class he as well. said it, he oh, addressed them really as he was gonna, yeah yeah it was just just ridiculous mm -hmm. so that was the catalyst that was it mm -hmm. and christine's father would know that and so there were some people that were resentful that you know what we're gonna go do our own thing so we did. We never competed with them purposely. Their classes, like Christine said, the highlight of the week was Thursdays. We never ran a class on Thursday night for many years. Okay. Purposely right, avoided yeah. it. And we continued to participate with them, help them. And uh, there's a difference. They're a club. They're uh, volunteers. And uh, we're professional. Big, mm -hmm. big difference. And, you know, many of them were our students. And... Um, even uh, just within the last few years, they brought all of their club members and instructors, and Debbie gave them a day-long instructor's clinic. Amazing. Which we've been asked I to do many, that. many times. And when Debbie and I initially would uh, do seminars across the U.S. and Canada, and um, one of the requests was often, how do you teach your instructors? Can you give up? So we do some of that. We've been asked to do that many times, but we're, we're, we're ba we do that ourselves here for mm -hmm. our own, yes. like all our, all our uh, staff members are previous students. Yes, all, they're all previous absolutely. students. Yes. So they've gone through our apprentice program. So. Yeah. It's anyway. the first requirement for yeah. joining our apprenticeship yeah. program. Yeah. It's you can't just come in off the street. No. You have to have taken at life skills yes. one, mm -hmm. two, and three. You have to be familiar with yep. our programs and our methods. And then from there, we'll help you deep dive and, learn as much as we can possibly teach about dog training but we always hand select people it is not something that's an open program actually i'm going to have one of our most recent uh apprentice apprentices who became an associate on the podcast very shortly and we'll talk all about this process because i think it's fascinating and most of us have come through it as well so and we're looking for people too that can teach classes yes. a lot of people yes. think it's just dog training but a lot of it is it's all <laughs> it's really all interacting with people and being able to yes. provide proper instruction. Well, Absolutely. We, we really, dog training is easy yes. for, for us. Mm -hmm. It's very easy, very simple. Um, a eight week program that someone might do an average pet owner, we could probably do in two to four weeks ourselves. Mm -hmm. So we were, we are people trainers. Yes. Dog training's a piece of cake. That's where we excel. Yes. Yeah. We could train an elephant, a camel, a dog, a horse. It doesn't really matter. We're people trainers. I've mm -hmm. never trained camels. <laughs> not, yeah. yet, not yet, you not probably, yet, not yet. In my future, I'm yes. sure you could. Um, <laughs> probably, yes. So, um, anyways, it uh, that's why we left, and uh, it's a long, long time ago. Yeah, but I find I, I'm actually so proud of that piece because we are so well versed in being able to continue to do that. And I wasn't there when you started the business in 1982. I didn't come on until 1999. So it's a little bit odd. You weren't for me even to born. You were even born. I was born in 76. <laughs> oh, so okay. I was, I was just a little, a little, a little gaffer at that point. <laughs> but um, at, at this stage, we are still the ones that are willing to step outside of our bubble and step outside of our box and step outside of our comfort zone and learn more. And unfortunately dog training can be, a very divided community and people people label themselves as a specific type of trainer and then they refuse to consider any other training methods and I, i'm sure that this goes all the way back to you having to 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 leave that club because you were doing something different than what the club members were willing to accept as possible and if you stagnate your learning and you stagnate your ability to step outside of your comfort zone and learn new things you will fizzle and you will die and mm -hmm. you will not continue to grow. And I think that one of the reasons that McCann Professional Dog Trainers has continued to grow and succeed is our ability to look critically at what we're doing in every aspect and say, 
we can do better or let's try something different or that's working great. I love that. We're going to stick with that and we're going to continue to evolve that. I think it's absolutely fantastic. So it, it, I, I imagine it has been your goal to continue or to start that and continue it all the way along these 40 years. Well, Debbie and I studied dog training an awful lot initially by traveling, mm -hmm. learning from others. When I was uh, studying and learning about finance and marketing and business economics, et cetera, I spent a lot of time in the library uh, reading about dog training and behavior. And you had um, your, your dog training book inside the economics well, book. Well, I, I, uh, I, did, I did both. I learned about <laughs> both, but I, I was more interested in the uh, dog aspect. Mm -hmm. But um, so we made our programs uh, through observation. What did people need? Mm -hmm. It was everything in the early days was based on uh, kennel club trials. And so some of that, ben that benefit benefited us mm -hmm. to learn that level, but we aimed it at family pets. Mm -hmm. And even though we excelled at dog sports, as uh, recognized by our obedience uh, success, fly ball success, and agility success, knowing that my daughter, Kaylee, Kaylee McCann. Mm -hmm. who, who, who usually goes by Kale, yeah, if you're so, wondering who Kale, Kale is. is. Yeah, we, had, we, had a, we had a trainer in here recently, from a couple of trainers from Britain, and I referred to her as Kaylee, and they didn't know who I was talking about, <laughs> because she's well known as Kale McCann, 21-time world champion. So all that, but those starts with basic training. It's Absolutely. Our basics that are so great. Mm -hmm. Um, what was anyway, so what we, we developed the programs, but they've evolved and changed completely. So myself for many years now, I've been macro. I, I know what's going on in the business macro. Mm -hmm. I'm not the micro guy. Right. Shannon, Christine know far more about everything than I do. Even as Shannon was talking there, I thought, boy, I hope she doesn't ask me a detailed question <laughs> because they know the evolution of the changes. I still am proud when I hear someone use a phrase that I used many years ago to describe a certain thing. I think, man, they're using the same uh, phrasing. And so Deb and I are very proud, but things have evolved and they've become so much better. So much so that I even sometimes have brought to tears. Yeah, I've seen that happen. I love those moments. I love those honest emotional moments. And I have quite a few of them myself. <laughs> so, all right. So back to McCann versus McCann. I'm glad you changed the name to something that was a little bit less combative. I'm, I'm kind of liking McCann versus McCann. I think we should have a... <laughs> I think we should put a sign up above a doorway, like the McCann versus McCann Hall or something yeah, that's like that. That's a good idea. We yeah. have some old signs right, yeah, still yeah. existing from that. <laughs> Those signs yes. are great. Well, oh now we'd goodness. have to make it McCann versus McCann versus McCann versus McCann <laughs> versus, versus McCann. McCann. Yeah, yeah, that's true. <laughs> Let's talk about why that is. Who are those extra three McCanns? Well, we mentioned Kale, of course. Yeah, well, all three of our children are involved in the business. Yes. Uh, Kelly is the expert, mm -hmm. no doubt about it, because... Uh, she's five and a half years older than her, 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 her middle child, which is Alexis. We refer to her as Lexi. Uh, Kale uh, was around a lot of great trainers from the time she was born. She, we got her a dog when she was three. She's part dog, I'm sure. She was raised by wolves. <laughs> raised by wolves. So she, we got her a dog when she was three. We trained it, but she did interact with it. She dressed it in doll's clothes and took it for hikes and <laughs> put it in a baby buggy. And it was a great dog. And she actually competed with it okay. when she was seven and started winning when she was only seven years old. And But she was 13 before she trained her own dog completely. And it was not a cooperative dog. That it was, was a male. Mm -hmm. Cosmic, yeah. yeah. A male half whippet, which aren't known for their trainability, is a male. <laughs> and he was a quarter Jack Russell, a quarter Border Collie. That's a whole other topic. But uh, how <laughs> he was that, known as a lurcher, correct? That's correct. Yes. That's correct. But uh, and we we bred it purposely. Mm -hmm. So as this is something that you know, there's this thing now called a sport mix. Yes. And Kelly has a dog named Five Alive because mm -hmm. he's five breeds. It's one of the reasons. The other reason is she likes the drink. But, um, <laughs> and it's a cool name. Yeah. <laughs> so, anyways. Um, we actually bred the first mixed breed for sports. Okay. And that was a half Jack Russell, half Border Collie. Mm -hmm. And that would have been around. Border right? Jack. Yeah. Well, it wasn't a border. So, uh, yeah, I guess it was. You're right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Sorry, yeah. I'm sorry. Anyways, would it have been around 1990? 1990, 1990, yeah. 1990 it was, yeah. It was 1990 to be exact. Right. Yes, 1990. So, um, anyway, I'm jumping around topics here so much on you. I, I started to go off on tangents, but anyways. I, I'm, That's okay. I've been it's all this, interesting. I've been yeah. in this game 50 years now. Yeah. So, so, so you got lots of chat. A lot of stuff. Anyways, where was I? Oh, so Kale's the oldest. Yep. Five, so she really got into dog training. She's passionate about it. And uh, Lexi, all three of my kids love dogs. And they 
know dogs because they're around it. They also know our business because they're around the dining room table every night. Yeah. And uh, they, they heard dog business, dog training. Let's talk about that dining room table for a bit because it was there was probably more than just the group of you around the dining room table talking about dogs and dog training. So you had other instructors, I'm sure, that yes. would you would be talking about program development and things like that, correct? Oh, yeah. So one time I, I did, I've over the years, I've done a lot of media you know, because dogs are a popular topic. Mm -hmm. So I've done lots of TV shows and mm -hmm. all I, it's, it's a long list. And it was one of the guys uh, was filming. He said, you know, your children are really lucky. And I said, why? And he said, because they are learning about business and about dogs yeah. in a great way. It just, you know, it's not osmosis, but that's a term that's used often. Mm -hmm. But um, anyway, so um, yeah. So they, they, Susan Garrett, who, is a, a big name. Uh -huh. She um, babysat our kids fairly regularly. It was over oh, at Christmas. God. One night was the funniest thing is um, the kids were need to go to bed for, it was Christmas Eve and she got out some sleigh bells and rang them. Kids look, took off like a <laughs> hell, ran to the bed because the they thought Santa Claus was on the roof. Anyways, I remember that story. Anyway, so they're influenced by many, many dog trainers yeah. ourselves, of course, talking about it all the time. Even to this day, uh, Kale, relies upon her mom as a sounding board. Like if she's got a problem or a concern, doesn't have a lot of people that she can, jurist people in, in the world that she can refer to. And she does interact with them, but her mom still, her mom is a great dog trainer. Yes. And uh, so there, there's a topic though that I haven't touched on, but I'm sure you'll have Deb on here sometime. I will. The business is where it is because Deb and I have complementary skills. Yes. And I do want to talk about that. Mm -hmm. So what would you say the biggest success points from each of you were? Well, obviously I, we're both, we're expert dog trainers. Mm -hmm. We both had huge success in that. And I think that set us apart slightly off is an important point to make is our, um, Ability to teach dogs to come when they're called. A lot of people can teach sit down, stay, but re teaching the dogs to come when they're called off leash set us apart. And what made us professional, what made us successful was results. Absolutely. We taught mm -hmm. many, we could teach other people to do that. Debbie's an outstanding teacher. Yes. Teacher. And we've had many school teachers, education professionals comment when they've had a class from her. She's the best teacher they've ever known. And she's been teaching since she's a, a young person. She taught swimming and many different levels. She developed programs in swimming outside of the Red Cross. She built her own programs. She brought that skill across to our dog training business. So our programs, um, she taught CPR, you know, she taught instructors how to instruct swimming. And so she's just, a, a, she's helped me, I was always pretty good at public speaking. Mm -hmm. She was better. And she also uh, taught me so many things about teaching. So she had a huge influence on the business on that side. And uh, so initially the business probably was sparked idea for the business was sparked by me. You are the, the idea guy. Well, well, I'm the idea guy, the <laughs> macro guy, the big picture guy and uh, my marketing finance background. Mm -hmm. And, um, but without her, you know, she, when she, she left the, uh, she was managing a recreation center, swimming pools, three of them, and uh, had a big staff, big budget. And, but she wasn't uh, appreciated in my opinion and uh, by the city that she worked for. Okay. And I knew that she was uh, a superstar. I always do that. And um, anyways, so I said, come, you know, come quit, come work with that. Well, we got approved to write a book by a book publisher from New York. I think it was called Alpine from New York City. And so we were, the, the book they wanted us to write was on flyball because we were the experts at flyball. Okay. Anyway, so Deb took a year sabbatical and uh, she'll know the exact details because uh, anyways, when, I'll have to get back to this other topic we are on about the children. So anyways, uh, she, she uh, took a year sabbatical to write the book. At the same time, she had a baby. I think it would be 1988. It might have been Lexi, our middle child, five and a half years after Kaylee. Anyway, so... Um, Anyway, so while she was off work from her paying job, she focused on her business mm -hmm. and started looking after administration because I'm terrible at administration. Funny thing is, <laughs> I tell you, remember I made the joke earlier about getting fired from the bank because they, they got rid of the $2 <laughs> yeah. bill? Yeah. Um, I was an administrator in the bank for a long time. I, I was terrible at it. They, they would have fired me anyway. So <laughs> anyways, but um, so anyways, when Deb looked after the administrative side, things really started to take off. She went back to work. Um, we never did write the book. Still haven't written to this day. We should do something in that area on the history of it. Yeah. Anyways, mm -hmm. then, then our son Dan. The virtual was, flyball our, museum. Right? Our, our son Dan yeah. was born mm -hmm. in 89, a year later. So anyway, it was, um, 
Yeah, so that's really between Deb, my skill on the, you know, dog training. Our financial advisor said to us sometime, maybe 10 years ago, somebody was asking a question about us, Deb and I. And he said, Deb and Marty would have been successful no matter what business they went in. Because really, we are, we are a business. Mm -hmm. But we've taken the skill of dog training and teaching dog training yes. to others and made it a business. Absolutely. And then through uh, the popularity of dogs, um, we've been able to attract outstanding, talented staff. It's just the list is so long. Yeah. Peggy, Carol. Yeah. Uh, there'd be so many. So mm -hmm. I mean, it's it's a long, We're long very list. Blessed in the last the people around us. in the last couple of years, when the, when, the, when during the pandemic, when all those staff members, some of them five or six retired with all that institutional knowledge gone well my this is going to be tough and the new people i, I don't want to be critical of the previous but we're e even stronger and better and deeper change deeper. does that mm -hmm. when you embrace yeah. it in the yeah. right way when deeper. you let change yeah. beat you of yeah. course you you get stuck in the past but when you embrace change and you flow with it and you use it as a catalyst to make you better that's only going to get better. And the fact that we're attracting this talent makes me really proud. Mm -hmm. And yeah. new new people, they bring in fresh blood. Yes, and, and it, energy. It, yeah, and it motivates the people who have been there for a while. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, we've been here for a while, and all of a sudden these new people come in, and you see their enthusiasm, and it sparks your enthusiasm back yes. again. Realize how lucky we are, don't we? Yes, mm -hmm. yes. We're yeah, lucky. Yeah, oh, yeah. completely. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'll go back to that train of thought. My second child, Lexi, mm -hmm. she uh, didn't stay in the business. She, uh, Peggy... Uh, homes in our office. She wrote our manual on customer service. Is she talented or what? She's amazing. Very, she trained yes. all our office staff. Peggy is remarkable. Them, mm -hmm. And all of my children and so many young people. Oh my gosh, she's talented. I think she wrote a, a, a historical novel. She, um, I think, has a master's in mathematics. She could. She has a black she's belt. Black belt. Karate. Yeah. Karate. Right. She, she, she is, could do um, anything. She could open a bakery. Oh. She bakes for us nonstop. She, yes. she takes such good care of all of yes. us. Oh, that, such and so she she trained the kids mm -hmm. and everybody, 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 mm -hmm. like a hundred probably if yeah. you add yes. them all up. Yeah. And um, anyway. Lexi went to work in the hotel industry, mm -hmm. high-end hotel industry in management. So her background and training in that has benefited us. Absolutely. She's back in the business and she's helping us in so, human resources. She has great management yeah, and yes. skills. So, and so many, and she actually is um, sharing some of the duties of her mother, Deb. Because Deb's, as our job business evolved, you know, there's just too much for us. We originally were just two of us, yeah. maybe a little bit of help here. But uh, Lexi is taking many of those tasks away from Deb, mm -hmm. but so are you, so are you, so many people are sharing because it's too big for one person. Yeah. Um, the Dan, his background is in business mm -hmm. and so he's a business strategist. So he's helped us in that way, mm -hmm. but they all love dogs and, um, I don't know. Kale's a dog expert. The other two are familiar with dogs, love dogs. They all know a bit more about it. So anyway. They probably know a ton more than the average person. They, well, right. they oh, yeah. They certainly do. Yeah. It's certainly like tri do. tribal knowledge for yes. them. Yes. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Well, Lexi ran a program, in, for training program in Toronto. called at, 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 uh, uh, I would call it a museum or an event center called Pauseway. So she, she ran the training there. And that was a few years ago when she was in university. Mm -hmm. so, I remember Pauseway, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So basically, good. Dan got a really good education in business. I could go on about all his achievements. Lexi got a really good education at university. And uh, Kelly didn't go to university. And I think she was a bit apprehensive about some things. And um, when she became more of a lead manager, and she, I said to her, you know, you have more knowledge. I did marketing and I, I did projects. It was all make-believe. She's been doing real stuff yeah. in business, making business decisions. And, you know, the way initially she had a lot of success in dog training and uh, she didn't really know what she knew but as time went on she started teaching others of course some of our long-term employees thought who's this little kid well then she, she <laughs> proved it and she earned her stripes and now she's a leader but she had to earn it yeah i remember her frustration at people not being willing to listen to her when she was you know 16 year old yeah. kaylee yeah. helping out in class yeah. kaylee i just called her yeah. 16 year old kale helping out in classes and getting frustrated because of course People are looking at her like she's a kid and I don't want to listen to you, but she could have dug, she could have trained circles yeah. around everybody in yeah. that room. Yes. With yeah, her yeah, yeah. Like I say, at 13, she trained a male dog and uh, she did it all herself. Deb and I didn't yeah. do it. And she did a great job. So yeah. anyways, she's trained. I bet you, I'd, I actually have a list somewhere, well over 20 dogs. 
So, and then I guess you guys do it every day. You're mm-hmm. interacting with dogs. So you're learning all the time. Oh, you're absolutely. All the time yes. Absolutely. About dogs and situations. One of my favorite qualities of Marty McCann is that if you have ever impressed him, you know about it. He <laughs> is so good at complimenting and you are so fabulous at making people feel good when yes. they have done good work. Well, thank you very so, much. That's you a are nice very compliment. welcome. Yes. You are very welcome. It's not, uh, I don't know. Just, I'm excited. (laughs) Yeah. I'm happy. Well, and that's, that's awesome because like you pointed out earlier, some people will look at that and get a bit bitter instead of appreciating and being excited for other people's success. So I I think that that's one of the reasons that we've been successful as well as we have cultivated a culture of positive people. And we talked a little bit about the um, apprenticeship program and the associates and how we add to our teaching staff and One of you said uh, it's not necessarily all about the dog training. And that is so true because the dog training skills come with all of our associates, apprentices, every single one of those people that we have brought on. They have learned over the years how to be good dog trainers and how to train dogs well. And, you know, I've watched so many of our instructors go from brand new associates to very, very accomplished dog trainers. The thing we can't teach is having a good personality, having empathy being able to communicate and being able to teach all of those things are skills that are sort of a natural inborn skill that people have or they don't have they either have that bitterness or they have that desire to impress and desire to be positive and make the world around them positive Mm -hmm. and I think that that's one of the biggest pieces of our success is that we have so many wonderful positive people and including yourself at the head always screaming about everybody's accomplishments I think that's just an amazing thing well the testimonials that we get uh tell us that yeah is uh we're it's people skills that that we have and we look for in our instructors yes uh Trainer, somebody could be an outstanding dog trainer and they maybe want to come to learn from us. They still have to go through grade one, uh, sorry, life skills. Life skills one. Yeah, <laughs> and the old names. Yep. And uh, they have to go through the, the, the program. It's really about not dog training, it's people skills. Yes. Right. And um, I am really excited and pumped about the testimonials we get about how people feel yeah. about mm-hmm. us. And um it really, that's how we measure our success is how the, not really the dog training results, but how the people feel yes. about, you know, right. their dog and what they got out yes. of it. Absolutely. And the repeat customers, um, yep. you know, like a, a lady said to me, said this to me the other day, I recognized she had, she was new to our class. It was lesson number two. And I saw she had an old uh, Garrett McCann dog training leash. Oh my goodness. So I said, you've <laughs> trained with us before. And she says, yes, I have. And uh, she said, we brought our golden retriever here 20 years ago. And, you know, she's passed away and this is our, our newest puppy. And I said, I, I knew by your leash. And uh, <laughs> so they still have our equipment too. We yes. get the repeat customers with our leashes too. Yeah, yeah. absolutely yeah. amazing. I actually have a, a collection of names of people who have who have um, come and joined us again for classes and said, when we ask, you know, how did you hear about mm-hmm. us? Oh, I trained my last dog with you 10 years ago mm-hmm. or my parents trained right. with our, you. We're getting this next generation exactly. now. It's like, yeah, our, our, yeah. Exactly. It's so fascinating yes. that because we've been around for 40 years, we're getting people who have trained multiple generations etc right. it's just such a cool thing yes yes swanee favorite marty story Uh-oh. oh oh <laughs> i well i do have a fun marty story but i don't know if marty i'll tell it to marty afterwards he may not appreciate it online but i my favorite about marty is how much fun he is if marty's there it's going to be fun. You, you just know it. You just know it. It's like, there's a party. Is Marty going to be there? No, I'm not going. Marty's there. I'm in. I'm in. Marty is so much fun. He, um, you know, one of my favorite jokes, uh, why is seven afraid of nine? No. Why is seven afraid of eight? I haven't thought about it for a long time. One of my favorite jokes. Because seven, eight, nine. That's right. Yes. And that is, that's classic Marty. That okay. is the originator yes. of the dad joke. I'll, let, I'll guess at what the joke is, but I'm not sure. If it's if I'm not right, don't tell the other oh, one. Okay. 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 <laughs> okay. I was at the Sky Dome. Was that it? No. Okay. I'm at the Sky Dome, and we're gonna do entertainment. Sky Dome, which is called the Rogers Center these yes. days. Yes. Yes. And we're gonna we're we're gonna be uh, major entertainers as part of the Credit Valley Dog Show, and uh, we have a room in the Sky Dome, upstairs in the hotel. 
So from the floor of the uh, uh, arena, the, the stadium, I was uh, the people... All the dog trainers, they looked up and they could see me in the window, <laughs> and I had nothing on but my underwear. <laughs> and because Did I didn't realize was... that anybody could see. I forgot oh about that story. I know it. Yes, okay, yes, yes, I, yes. I just and had anyways, a, yeah. And then those days, they didn't have cell phones, so they couldn't get a picture of me. <laughs> but there was a famous story about the Sky Dome during a baseball game that preceded yeah, that, I, right? Yes, yes. And, yes, uh, I yes, do anyways, remember that story. So I'm up in the Sky Dome, and oh. uh, it changed. I looked down. Anyway, that, I thought, okay, I had, I don't had, tell the other one that it must I had be worse. buried that memory. I had <laughs> buried it, but now it's back. Yeah, so that would have been in the early 90s. Yeah, that early been, 90s. Yeah, because the Blue Jays won the World Series in 92 and 93, and that's two of the years when we first did it. Right, yes. Yeah, actually, you know what? That's something I didn't mention. We did a lot of entertainment. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we, we did the Toronto Sportsman Show. Oh, my gosh. Um for more than 20 years. Yeah. Yes. We did the Royal Winter Fair, mm -hmm. and we were on TSM with the Dog and Horse Relay. Yes. We did the I remember doing that with Quincy yeah. Marotti. We did the Calgary Stampede um, in 1992 and 1993. We worked with the RCMP Musical Ride on at least four occasions mm -hmm. where we were the opening act for them. One of them was in 1992. It was at the Kitchener Auditorium. And... Um, Robbie Alomar, because I'm a huge baseball fan, hit a home run against the Oakland Athletics. And all the bounties and ourselves, the dogs, we were off stage between shows. We were all listening to it on the radio together. It was a huge. We all went crazy. So that was 1992. I bet. And lots of Tiger Cat games, too. Tiger There's Cat lots games. Lots of them. Calgary Stampede, or rather the Calgary uh, uh, Toronto Argonauts. We did the Cal a game in Calgary, Stampeders against Toronto mm -hmm. Argonauts. And well, we supported a lot of our local fairs. Yeah, we uh, sure did, yep, and, and yep. Uh, fund what raisers for uh, yeah, lots of fairs. Mm -hmm. I um, I was on CTV, which is in Canada is a big deal. <laughs> CKCO <laughs> out of um, Kitchener. I did a fifty-two part series. Each hit was two minutes long. Do you know when I first started at? McCann's. I was so eager for all the information that I could get. I just, I would sit and watch other trainers. I would sit and watch classes. And I brought all 52 of those tapes home and I watched your two minute segments. Wow. And then I brought them back to the hall and I left them in their box. And I'm sure that's where they stood. <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah. Right? So I, I did, in the old days, we didn't have social media. Mm -hmm. So I, mm -hmm. I was on TV a lot. Uh, on the Channel 11, the local TV station, I was on at noon. And uh, Connie Smith, I think, was, I don't know, she's a local. Right. She's yes. retired now. Local icon. But it was back in those days. Tom Charrington was on, was uh, the, the big deal of the newscaster. And uh, Dick Beddows, you guys don't probably don't even remember the names. I remember those names, I, yeah. So well, I, was, I was on yeah, noon I every day, them. and I'd give tips on dog training. And um, then uh, there's a guy who was, ended up being on the Toronto Maple Leafs, uh, Leafs channel. His name was, uh, oh, my gosh. Oh, I, oh, how I, it was Paul Hendricks. Paul okay. Hendricks. Anyways, he would come out to Rockton. Uh, that was before we built our our building here in 1996. He would come out to Rockton because we were there for ten years from 1986 to 1996. And at noon on Wednesdays, he would do news, weather, and sports, and a tip on dog training. Mm -hmm. So, um, anyways, we we were really fortunate. We had so much media attention. Um, we, at one time we, we advertised eventually when we opened here in 96, we'd been in business 14 years mm -hmm. already. And, uh, we advertised on five radio stations because okay. we needed to expand our market. Mm -hmm. And we are now heavily, we're in the country, um, in a little place called Flamborough, mm -hmm. but we're 10 minutes from all kinds of, uh, population we really are, yeah. and we're 30 minutes from all a lot of population. So we advertised on five radio stations. We were on two television stations. And so that's how we, we drew more attention to yeah. us. And um, anyway, we've just been, we're located in a fantastic place. We're really, really yes, lucky. Yes, we are, yes. Yeah. And a hub of dog shows too. We don't yes. have to drive far to yeah. compete with our own yeah. dogs. Yeah. And we, as I say, we can be across the border of the States so quickly. Mm -hmm. And I guess what I'm so proud of is so many Americans come to us now as our as our students. Yes. Mm -hmm. Kelly has a regular um, student come in from Wisconsin, drives regularly, Amazing. New Jersey. You know the big um, show in uh, New York, Madison Square Garden is called Westminster. Westminster. Yeah, mm -hmm. I sure the do. First time they had, I get asked about this. Oh, I saw these uh, this dog agility um, on the Westminster show, and they're all excited about it. I said, yeah, well. The gal who won that, the very first time they had agility, was one of Kelly's students, drives up from New Jersey. And Kelly's gone there to teach for them. Mm -hmm. So we, we've really, 
I, I never imagined yeah. that it would be this big or this successful. Yes. But whatever. Just start mm -hmm. out laughing and having fun. And look at this. All the, all the great people. That's why we've attracted so many great people. Yes. Mm -hmm. Talented people. Oh, my goodness. It's been quite a ride for me, and I've not been there from the beginning. So. Well, you've been here a long time. I have yep. been. Yeah. I've got a lot of gray hair to show for. <laughs> <laughs> for a long time. Marty, it has been a pleasure having you on the podcast today <laughs> and has. going down memory lane. I can't wait wait to hear some of these stories that Swanee has that are not necessarily family friendly <laughs> for the podcast but uh, I, I can't imagine I would do anything wrong oh <laughs> no 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 of course yeah. not of no, course definitely not, not. Marty's been not an wrong. angel just an funny. angel <laughs> <laughs> just funny well I want to thank you again for coming on the podcast and chatting with us I will look forward to the v virtual flyball history that we're going to put together and I think lots of people will be looking forward to that museum as well so well you know what it's going to happen I'm going to watch this later. Mm -hmm. I'm going to say, why did I say that? <laughs> why did I neglect saying this? So maybe in a couple of years, I'll come back. Oh, absolutely. And we'll have you, to do part two. Yeah. yeah. You've got yeah. so many people though. My wife, if she and I were here, we, we would be a McCann versus McCann. For sure. <laughs> that was and, why uh, I decided yeah. to separate the two of you. Debbie would have to sit over there yeah. for sure. Yeah. Or, or if my daughter was here, she'd be rolling her eyes. <laughs> or any of them. But um, uh, you know what you ne neglected to mention is Ken Steep. Okay. Unbelievable. Let's talk about that's Ken. My, that's my son-in-law. Mm -hmm. And um, fantastic. Mm -hmm. Like he's really the one who made the YouTube channel. Yep. So great. And the guy works so hard. He does. Yeah. So as Debbie and I transition, um, you know, we'll always be involved in a, in a, a small way. And like I say, we're more to macro people than micro. And, uh, but Ken, Ken is, um, didn't even mention him. And I feel bad about that. But anyways, He's a superstar. Kale's a superstar. Mm -hmm. They're celebrities now. Yes, yeah. they, are. they are. Well, and Ken actually started the podcast with me way back when, and we recorded a whole whack of episodes for a couple of seasons, and then he just got too busy, so we yeah. changed the format a little bit, but Ken is always a very appreciated presence mm -hmm. around McCann's, and you are right. He works very, very hard. Yeah. Full-time at two jobs, pretty much. Yeah. Full-time yeah. plus hey, at this one, and full-time at another one as a firefighter. You ever talked about where we are right now? Cause, no, no. Because we're, we're in what we call the studio. We yeah, call it right, Studio yeah. 905. This is just a little room that we're sitting in. Yeah. And, um, you know, it the other end of this place, it's, we're in a mobile home is what it was mm -hmm. initially on our property. It's about oh, 150, 200 yards from our main building. Mm -hmm. And it's on the property and it was a mobile home and we converted it into a production studio. Yep. Mm -hmm. So many of the uh, videos you see are... Um, out in another part of this little home. And this is Shannon's uh, podcast room we're in. It is so, yeah. the podcast yeah. studio. And it has become an amazing little studio. Yes. When Ken yeah. and I first started the podcast, we would sit at our desk with our computers in front of us. And now we've got couches that yeah. we lounge mm -hmm. on. We've got four mics set up. And of course, we have the McCann Dogs logo on the wall behind us in this very artistic way. And we love it. We yes. have two or three people working here now, like doing editing. Yes. Production, yeah, creating, yeah. and uh, yeah, lots of stuff. I saw Shannon was out on my uh, front lawn and my back lawn because my home is on the <laughs> property too, uh, quite a bit further away. And uh, we're on a 20 acre, uh, it's like a park here. Yeah, it absolutely. And it's uh, beautiful. So, yeah, and yeah. we have lots of uh, lots of that acreage is open for our students to be able yes. to use, right. including mm -hmm. the dog training heaven indoors that is mm -hmm. purpose built. Yep. built our our arena with the turf in it. Yeah, absolutely. Our main building with three training halls. And actually, uh, there's a very nice virtual tour there's two virtual tours one that is just um music and and pictures and video and then there's one where marty mccann actually takes us oh, right, yes. on a tour yeah. around tour. the facility yes. Yes. so but th those are old now and actually we should do a new one we're launching we a new website yeah, we any day now mm -hmm. and um i was looking at the virtual tour it's it's good it's good but it's not up to date anymore yeah so um and then there's a walkthrough i do which isn't up to date so uh we're time doing to do new, it again new yeah. stuff new stuff in the summer yeah I've been mm -hmm. bugging you for years, actually, to re-record that one because in the summer, this property is absolutely gorgeous yep. when it's lush mm -hmm. and green. Yeah, and yeah, we have a little stream that runs through a couple bridges. Couple the Flamborough Creek. Yeah. yeah, yeah, we have um, 
actually parking for 200 cars, mm -hmm. plus our buildings, yeah. plus beautiful green areas to mm -hmm. walk your dog. And we have fit, two fenced yards, which call it, yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's a really nice place. And the studio here, is, which we're in, this is just one tiny little room yeah. in, inside it is uh, right adjacent to the, all that stuff. Yeah. So And we continue to grow. Yeah, We're, we're going to have to put an addition on here. <laughs> we, you know, we might. We might. We, all sorts of plans right. coming, though. Yeah. All sorts of plans. Yeah. We've, we're always growing. We're yeah. always yeah. planning for the next best thing. And so, who, who do we have to thank? Stay the most? tuned. The dogs. Yeah, the absolutely. Dogs. Yep. yep. Absolutely. Yep. And their pet owners that love them so much. Yes. Which, we are very blessed to yep. be in a position where we get to impact people's yes. actual, like, yep. actually impact their lives mm -hmm. so much. Mm. And we get heartfelt thanks and tears and all sorts of gratitude from people yeah. all the time, which, of course. Yeah, it's really reinforcing isn't it yes positive reinforcement mm -hmm. for us. i worked for the royal bank and i uh, was in a uh, minor management position there people came in and complained and mm -hmm. i had to deal with complaints this business we're not perfect but uh we, we deal with a lot of warm fuzzy experiences absolutely uh yes. just happy people happy mm -hmm. dogs yeah. and if they weren't to begin with we'd try to make them that way right yeah. so it's really as i say I know that we are going to wrap up here, but when we first started uh, judging our students at the end of a program, we um, were foolish enough. We learned from this mistake of having sort of a pass fail. Mm -hmm. And then we realized, no, we shouldn't be judging people on with their dog skills. We do judge them on their skills, but more importantly, we should be judging us as a business yes. on how they feel Absolutely. about their experience here. And what I've always tried to drive home for many years and still continues is don't scare the students away. And uh, some, I, I know as long we, as they keep coming back, yeah, they'll keep they, training they'll, and they're they going to get the results. Get better. Yeah, so even bad. if their standards aren't as high as ours, if they're happy, I'm happy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So uh, they'll be better than they were when they came in the door. Absolutely. So um, yeah, never, don't scare them away. No. And uh, they, they have fun. They'll hang in there and they're going to do better. And then they become our ambassadors. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so it makes us feel good. Makes them feel good. Everybody's happy. Absolutely. Yeah. It's amazing. And there's a lot of trainers out there that let their egos drive their behavior. And yep. unfortunately they make their students feel bad yeah. about mm -hmm. their lack of progress in some points, which dog training can be hard. It is an easy thing, but it is also a very difficult thing. Mm -hmm. So a lot of the times we need to nurture and we need to give pep talks and we need to keep people training because it will all come together if they just don't give up. And that is such a life lesson that we've learned. We, we don't blame the dogs. Never. And we don't blame the people. Never. And I know that unfortunately some of uh, alternative dog training places, they will blame the student yeah. because they the, the instructor's not successful. So they, instead of blaming themselves, say, hey, how can I help this person do better? They blame the student. Yeah. We're gonna, not going to do that Never. ever. We no. put the onus back on us to yeah. help those people. Right. Absolutely. And that goes throughout our whole organization. Yeah. And yeah. because we have so many um, staff with so many different experiences, right. mm -hmm. there might be yep. a student that I just you know, my, my teaching style is just not yep. getting through to them or I don't have the the experience with the problem they're dealing with. Yep. But I can just look beside me and say, Shannon, can you help this person? Mm -hmm. And Shannon's like, definitely. And in she goes. So yep. it's, it, we have so many people with so yes. much experience. Yeah. So now we have an internal communication system, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Slack, mm -hmm. which we uh, communicate. I, I, I watch nearly all that stuff. And um, we're helping one another to learn. Right. And mm -hmm. uh, that makes us better. Yes. And in, in, in turn makes our students better. Right. Oh, yes. absolutely. Absolutely. And here's to 40 more years. Imagine what things are going to look like I'm 40 for 30, years from now. But I'll go for 40 if I can get it. 40. Okay. Well, yeah. you know what? Yeah, Let's I'm make a sure. date right now. 40 years from now, we're going to we meet back. This okay. Day. We'll just have to I'm plug our brains together. Like yeah. We'll be able to be at different corners of the world and we'll be able to connect our, you know, right. yes. our microchipped yes. brains to each other and we'll be able to do a podcast <laughs> that way in 40 years. <laughs> Alrighty, this has been a blast. We'll definitely have you back on again, Marty, because I know there's a before forty years, before forty yes, years, before forty yes. years from now, and there's a million things that we didn't get to I'll talk about today. I'll dissect what I shouldn't have said and what I wish I had said. <laughs> there you go. There you go. We'll have a blast and do okay. it all again. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you. It's been a pleasure, everybody. On that note, I am Instructor Shannon. I'm Instructor Christine. Marty McCann. Happy training. <laughs> bye bye.